Now we come to another attractive force which exists and which is far stronger than what we have studied till now and that is called hydrogen bonding. This is called hydrogen bonding and this leads to a lot of exceptions and unusual behaviors where you are expecting none to happen, right? And especially so when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with organic compounds, right? So there'll be a, there'll be a lot of impacts of hydrogen bonding when we are dealing with the organic molecules. But normally, normally what happens here, what do we have? Uh, hydrogen is hydrogen when bonded when bonded to a highly electronegative electro negative element element develops develops a develops a polar molecule okay so what happens say say if h is bonded to f so what happens due to the high electronegativity of f and a very small size of it and you you must know that the electronegativity of this on the polling scale is the highest fluorine okay it is plus four so what the, what it does it pulls this this fluorine it pulls a lot of the electron cloud to itself okay so so it it actually becomes something like this right so or or i'll say this becomes delta negative and this becomes delta positive okay on a permanent basis okay the oppositely charged the oppositely charged ends of such a molecule of such a molecule then attract each other you see how they are intermolecular forces okay because there is a whole molecule and and the molecule as an independent entity is attracting some other molecule which is independent and that was the reason we had avoided the intramolecular bonding forces right so so then they attract each other so what happens there is another h here and another f here now what comes to our mind is is uh, how, how does it align it's not essential that they align like this it may so happen that the f comes here and the H goes there. Is it not? But what will happen? This, this repulsion will flip the HF molecule. Okay, so, so it may come like this, but it will get flipped eventually. And this becomes H, F, delta minus, delta plus, and this is dot, dot, dot. This dot tells you that there is no permanent bonding between the two rather a temporary kind of attractive force that develops between the two but it is so so very strong that you show it by a broken line okay that you show it by a broken line okay so so 
and and one of the most important examples of hydrogen bonding is is water okay so what happens there is a delta plus here and then there is a delta negative delta plus and this this molecule has an impact on this so this delta negative and this and this delta positive and this delta negative and Okay, so this is delta negative and delta positive and delta positive. You see how, how a chain kind of thing will come into play and what should happen due to this? Due to this, the boiling point of water that should have been quite low goes up and reaches 100 degrees centigrade. Okay, so, so and, and, the, and the same thing will, will start happening here as well. Okay. Okay, so, so, so this is how the chain forms. Okay, so water is water molecules are hydrogen bonded. Are hydrogen bonded to each other. Okay. Uh, won't the electron there attack the whole many O's instead of just attacking one? Hmm? I mean, won't H form a bond with two or three O's instead of just one? Yeah, it may. It does. But, uh, but then you'll, you'll get to know that there is also a thing called steric hindrance that we'll, we'll learn in organic chemistry. Steric hindrance is the physical, physical obstruction to the movement of a molecule. So maybe, maybe here you have got one and then, and then you say that, that there'll be, there'll be a molecule like this, okay? But, but then what happens, they come too close and they start repelling also. It may happen. So steric hindrance is something that comes into play. So, so a lot, uh, uh, you, you'd, you'd expect that there could have been maybe an O here and an H here. Hmm, why not? So, but but this, this repulsion and they also start coming into play. Okay, so around a molecule and, and especially when the molecule is a larger one like oxygen. Okay, oxygen is quite large, hydrogen is quite small. So it is oxygen which actually, actually does not allow things to come quite closer to it, right? So, so that also takes place. But it's not that only one, maybe two, three, they'll be attached. But more than that, the steric hindrance comes into play. So, so, so normally, okay, so... Normally, the more electronegative elements like N, O, and F participate in hydrogen bonding. Okay, they participate in hydrogen bonding, but at times you'll find that but at times species like Cl minus also participate in it. I, I'll give an example later. Participate in it. Okay. And what happens? 
the typical bond energy the energy of the hydrogen bond is from 10 to 100 kilojoule per mole which is a huge amount of energy typical energy of hydrogen bond hydrogen bond is equal to 10 to 100 kilojoule per mole okay it's 10 to 100 kilojoule per mole and it leads to it leads to significantly higher melting and boiling points than the expected so water it's very fortunate that water boils at that water boils at 100 degree centigrade otherwise otherwise what would have happened maybe in some summer if it was around some 50 60 the whole of water would have evaporated and then the whole of the ocean would have fallen down back no precipitate it will precipitate if it goes up it has to come down it cannot vanish okay so so very fortunately it is so and and it does not lead to sudden evaporation of water okay so for example uh, uh, methanol okay though it it is hydrogen bonded still it has got got a lower boiling point than water because it's only one of the leg leg goes into bonding right so so we are fortunate that water does not have that it, it's not that volatile okay